Hello, hello. We are back here at the All In Podcast headquarters here in Franklin in Cool Springs. We've got a very special guest today, Chanel Burton. And um, Chanel is a national native. I'll tell you a little bit about her. Um, we're going to talk about what it means to be all in with purpose today. She's got a master's degree in organizational leadership, a bachelor's degree in family and consumer sciences, and a graduate, a graduate certificate in entrepreneurship and business. She loves giving back and working within the national community. In her spare time, she enjoys singing, spending time with her family and friends. But most importantly, she enjoys the practice of real estate and works as an advocate for first-time home buyers and veteran and sellers and buyers to make their real estate experience a joy from start to finish. She incorporates her financial background and consumer science and her real estate experience to work for her buyers and sellers. Uh, she currently serves as an ambassador for the Greater National Association of Realtors, as well as a team leader for the Wilson Davis team and a team leader for Chanel Burton Associates team at Historic and Distinctive Homes. Chanel, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Mark, for you. having me. Good to see you as well. So purpose, man, I love that word. And that is a um, that's a word that resonates with you. That's a word that you have really decided that this is what you model your life after. So tell me, tell us about that. Okay. So I am a member at Mount Zion Baptist church here in Nashville, Tennessee. And, um, I became a member about 10 or 11 years ago. And so there was, um, a Bible study that Bishop Walker, he was preaching and he talked about purpose. And then I was young. I think I was probably like 24, 25. I hadn't even started teaching or using my degree or anything like that yet, or even real estate for that matter. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was talking about purpose and, and then when he was talking about, it, I didn't understand what it was. Cause I was like, well, what is my purpose for being here? Mm -hmm. So after he kind of preached the sermon, um, he he challenged everyone to pray to God for for him to reveal your purpose to you. Mm. So I went home because I felt like lost. Like, well, what you like the the question of like, what am I here to do? What am I here for? I feel like everything that I was doing, I went to school because that's what I was told to do. Um, I worked because that's what I was told to do, but I didn't know how it aligned or what my service area was here. Right. Um, so I went home and I prayed. I prayed about it. I was like, God, I don't know what this is. I don't quite understand it, but I just pray that you reveal like purpose to me. Right. And immediately things just started happening, like trickling. Um, not all good things. Some things were not as pleasant, but things just started happening to align me to kind of where I am today. Wow. And so how does that, you know, you, you, you're in real estate, you're a course instructor, but you kind of started out uh, in education, right? And so talk about that a little bit. Okay. So yes, I started out, um, as a pre-K teacher, oh. um, I taught for about three years before I was promoted, but I started as a, a pre-K teacher and, um, I had a lot of colleagues that were friends of mine that we had conversations with. If you're a teacher, you know, when it's recess time, you, you chat with your buddies on the playground. Um, and I was so excited because I was like, okay, I kind of feel like I finally have the job I'm teaching. I love my classroom and I have the apartment that I wanted. Um, I'm living it. You know, I feel like I was kind of living kind of what I wanted. And so I was sharing with some of my colleagues on the playground about, um, you know, I love my loft apartment. Like it, I just, it was so neat to me. I just loved it because it was a loft. Yeah. Um, so they are dope. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. So I was like, I love it, you know, and they were like, well, do you, do you own it? And I was like, no, I, I rent it. And, and they were like, you know, and I was getting the, like, oh, well, I own my house and yeah, I own my condo. So like when they were sharing with me and some of them, I have been to their homes before. I never even knew that they owned it. I didn't know anything didn't about occur to you. Didn't know anything about home ownership or anything. So I was just like, wow. So one of my friends, she told me that her first house, um, she purchased when she was 20 years old. And so her parents had down payment money saved for her. She never rented. So mm. she moved here from Washington. Her and her husband moved here from Washington um, and they purchased the house. This was probably like 2015, um, purchased the house cash here. So then, I mean, you kind of know what the market was looking like. It was nowhere near like what it is now, mm -hmm. but still that was big to say that you purchased a home for $300,000 cash based right. on the home that you sold. Right. 
Um, so it was just an enlightenment for me. Um, and I wanted to learn more about the process. I felt like I was in that moment, in that conversation after we had it, I kind of felt like I was limiting myself to the okay. possibility of potentially being a homeowner. And right. at that time I was just scared because I just didn't know. Right. I didn't know the process. I didn't know how to start. I didn't even know what you had to do. Um, to become a homeowner. And around this same time, it's crazy how stuff aligns because my cousin, um, my cousin Ronnie, he he sings around Nashville, so you might have heard of him, but he does gospel singing. But um, me and him talked one day and I went to his home. He lived in Antioch. He was renting an apartment. And he told me just randomly, like, this is the last time you're going to come to my apartment because I'm going to buy a house. Like, hang out approved or nothing. Like, I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, like how to, how to do it and he was like, I'm just telling you, like, God is going to give me a house. And I was like, OK. So I didn't talk to him for maybe like a month or two. So he sent me the address to come. He said, I'm, I've moved and he purchased a home. Yeah. So I was like, well, if you can do it, sure to goodness, like I can do it, too. Like, what right. was it hard? It inspired you. Very inspiring. So after that, I just like I said, I don't have anything saved up. I'm just going to go see if I can get like approved for a mortgage loan. So I went and I was shocked about how much they said I was approved. I was like, are you serious? It was, so, it was more or less than you thought. More than I it was thought. More, okay. Um, so sometimes it's the opposite, right? And you're just, somebody's disappointed. Yeah. You know. But I would, you know, but I would like, it's, it's, it's a different market than 2015, you know? So now, I mean, it's probably like, you know, scary because people are not getting approved for as much, um, or, you know, that disappointment that people have because they're not getting approved for as much. But I was, you know, surprised that I got approved and basically, they shared with me that I wouldn't have to bring anything to the table because I was a first time home buyer. Um, everything was going to be paid for. My my credit was in a, a good space. I hadn't even checked my credit in years. So I didn't even know like what my credit score was. Right. I had no idea. Um, so I started the process. I found someone. Um, I found her on the THDA website, actually. Mm -hmm. And I called her and she shared with me that she would be able to talk to me and she would be able to help me. And from that point on, probably about two months later, that's when I became a homeowner myself. Oh, wow. So this was 2015. Mm -hmm. Wow. So THDA, uh, for those who don't know, because we have listeners all over Tennessee housing development authority, and it's a bond program, but talk about how that helps you. So basically they, you got a loan mm -hmm. uh, through the mortgage company that you chose, mm -hmm. and then THDA comes in and they do a grant for the difference for the down payment and even some of the closing costs. Is right. that pretty much how it worked out for you? Right. Well, I didn't actually go through that program. Um, I didn't go through that program, but I heard about it. Okay. So that's what I was thinking that I was going to have to do. But I, they put me in some other kind of first-time home buyers program where it was a grant that I didn't have to pay it back. Okay. So I think THDA... They have they pay so much, but then you will have like a second mortgage where you have yeah. to pay it back. A small increment. So when people do hear that, they're like, a second mortgage is not is not the same as your first mortgage right. payment. So a tiny one. yeah, it's a tiny mortgage, probably like fifty dollars mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but basically, closed, went to the table, didn't have to pay anything. The seller paid my closing costs. Um, didn't have to pay any down payment, and I walked away a homeowner. Do you remember which bond pro or which program first time buyer was it? I do not remember. I do not remember, but I didn't have to pay it back. Well, that's good. I didn't have to pay it back. And here we are. And so now you help people buy homes. I do. So, you know, the craziest thing is when all this happened, um, I went to, I was home shopping and I went to go see a house and I was like, I really want this house. So my brother with me, it was raining. The windshield wipers weren't working right. It was just like, signs. <laughs> so you remember all the, the little house. details of this yes, day, like signs that it wasn't the house, but I love the house. So I was like, I told my real husband, I want to put an offer on this house. So we didn't get it. So I was like, okay, look, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting a little frustrated with this. I think I probably just need to wait because I don't have no money saved at this point. So if mm -hmm. anything happens right now, I don't have anything saved. Um, I said, maybe I should just wait, you know, and save some money right. um, until I feel more comfortable. And so she was like, OK, but like out of the blue one day, she sent me this house and she was like, I think this is the house for you. Yeah. And I said, I want to go see you when I get off. And when I got there, I beat her to the house and I was like, 
this is my house. Like I walked in and I said, this is my room. This is like, I just was naming mm -hmm. stuff. So we put an offer on it. We didn't offer above asking, um, but there were multiple people coming to see it at the time. Now, this is 2015. Okay. There was a family coming in as we were coming in, and there was other families pulling up as we were leaving. And I told her, I said, I want to submit the offer still. She said, you sure you don't want to offer more? I said, no, asking. So then I had enrolled in real estate school to get my license um and so she had called me while i was at school she knows in school and she knew not to call me if i was in class but she called me um and she was like we we didn't get it and i was like that's okay i said if it's meant for me i'll get it so this was probably tuesday wednesday um she started sending me more listings because we didn't get that one so thursday night she's calling me and she's blowing me up while i'm in class so I go outside to take the call and she was like, we got the house. I was like, how? You just told me that we didn't get it. And she said, well, the sellers decided that they wanted uh, someone that had conventional financing um, and that our offer was still strong without even offering asking. So I was like, I told you this was my house. <laughs> I love it. So like, like the, when you, what do you think now, you know, going through what you went through, you know, you talked about how, you know, there was things you didn't know about, like you didn't know your credit, but you obviously you kind of figured you, you hadn't paid things late mm -hmm. um, or late enough or whatever. But w when you now deal with your peers uh, or even then, what, what was then or now, like what, what is the biggest hold thing holding people back? You know, the lack of knowledge of something or, or what is it? I would say that in your it's, experience, I would say that it's education. That's why I I wanted to gravitate towards first time home buyers. I know what the experience is like because even though that came back full circle to be mine, I was so terrified. Like I almost told my mom, like I don't want to do it because I'm I'm scared. Yeah. And my mom, she's passed on now, but. Then she kind of just coached me through it and was like, you know, if God has this for you, Chanel, he's going to provide. It's, it's going to be OK. And I think that the biggest thing um, for most people and I would say brown people um, for sure is that we're not educated on the process. Mm -hmm. um, it was easy. Once I got through it, it was so easy. And I was like, that's it. That's all. I mean, I really didn't even have this have to have this college degree to understand how easy right. this process is. And so what I will say is I grew up in public housing my entire life. Um, right here in Nashville, right? Right here mm -hmm. in Nashville. I grew up in Tony Sudicum Homes mm -hmm. um, in Cheatham Place. And so up until I went to college, so I grew up there my entire life. Um, I never heard about home ownership. I never knew how to attain it. Mm -hmm. I never knew what the steps were. Um, and randomly one day um, when I was in real estate school, I pulled my mom's credit and credit was great. I said, mom, like, did you not know that we probably could have, we could have owned a house years ago, but she just uh, didn't she know. Didn't she just didn't know the process. So then, especially with me learning it from my peers, in addition to me going to real estate school at the time and kind of understanding more, I was just like, that's the barrier. We just do not know. We don't know the steps. And so I think that, with having more people advocate for the education process itself in, in learning how to, what do you do? What are the steps? Right. How do you get pre-approved? What do you need to get pre-approved? Um, has really helped some, some people um, become homeowners. And I think that that's the biggest thing as far as like holding people back, just the right. education piece itself. Well, what I hear you saying is you've, you, you really became a voice mm -hmm. um, in your community. And then like, and I know you lost your parents in the last uh, few years, but mm -hmm. like when you, when you became a homeowner, what was that like for them? Ooh, um, for my mom, even when I closed, I, when I closed on my house, I took my mom. She had, she don't know anything. Like she didn't know anything about the home buying process. She didn't know what I was signing. She just knew it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> and so I took her with me um, to closing and she was inspired by me to, uh, to do that, okay. you know? And so she said, I know that you're nervous, um, but it's going to be okay. God is going to provide for you to take care of this home. So as soon as we, um, closed and we got to the house, my mom immediately started cleaning up, making the house like hers too. Um, so, so she was very proud that I was able to do that. Um, 
and my dad as well. He was proud of me. Um, my grandfather passed away during um, COVID, and he actually passed away from COVID. Oh wow! Sure but um, thank you. Um, he he gave me the money to get my home inspection done, and so because I I'm telling you I went it. Down. I had yeah. nothing saved. I didn't have anything saved. Um, and so he gave me the money to to get my home inspection done, and he was so proud of me. You know, it, it was like, you know, the pat on the back that you want to receive from your grandfather. Yeah. So yeah, he was very proud. So my parents were proud, um, and my grandfather was proud as well. So you were one of the first ones, just really in your even your extended family to own a home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my brother, both of my brothers now, um, well, two of my brothers, they own homes now too. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so, you know, you're, what were you doing at the time that you purchased your home for, what were you doing for work? At that I, was time? A you were I was a teacher. I was a pre-K teacher. Pre-K teacher. Mm-hmm. I love, yeah, I love that age. Yeah. And kids so are that age. what I was doing was going to work from seven to three thirty. Then I went to real estate school at night. Right. And so I got out of class probably like 10 o'clock and started my day all over until I finally got through real estate school. I mean, it's work, right? But I mean, you have to, I I mean, we talk a lot about this on the show. I mean, um, you know, it's mindset, you Mm -hmm. know, or purpose Mm -hmm. and, you know, to hear you talk, you know, you decided that, Hey, this, this is, might be my purpose. Um, not might be, it sounded like you just became convinced of it. And so, but then it's, you can't just stop there. It's not like, you know, necessarily a thunderbolt that it, you've got to do the work. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I think, um, I was just listening to a guy earlier today, um, Steve Afra, and he owns a, a company that does, uh, that does, um, um, he does private lending. Mm-hmm. So, so people outside of the box So the whole subprime industry in a way, but he's talking about God in the beginning, how he thought, he thought something, uh, then he spoke it. This is in Genesis. So mm-hmm. he thought it, then he spoke it, but mm-hmm. then he, then he, then he created. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think some people, you know, growing up and just in, in our peers, and maybe you can speak to this, but like a lot of people will think it, um, but then they either a don't speak it or then they think it and speak it, but then they stop there and then, but you, you didn't stop there. You decided like after work, I'm going to start going to school because that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think too, what comes with that is purpose. I feel like through this whole process, God has kind of revealed to me that purpose is above me. He needs me mm-hmm. to be in certain places for certain people. It's not about Chanel at that point. You're it's a about- vessel. That's exactly right. So for for me, even with real estate, I was probably like in the sixth grade when I really started having like a um a passion for it. I used to watch HGTV in the sixth oh. grade. And so all the way back then. That's all great. the way back then. And it's crazy because some of my friends from middle school, I went to a John Early Middle School. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was Buena Vista then. So before it changed to Buena Vista, it was well, before it changed to John Early, it was Buena Vista, right. but it's in North Nashville. And um, some of my friends remember that I was interested in it then, but I didn't know, you know, th- that it was going to come back full circle all these years um, because that's not even what I went to college for. So I didn't think that it was going to come full circle, but I do know that passion um, aligns with purpose and with purpose comes prosperity. So if you are where God wants you to be doing what he wants you to do, then the prosperity will come. That's what Steve Affer said. I mean, it's literally. It will I come. Mean, if you're doing what you love and want and you know and you're doing the work and, you, and you're passionate about it. It's the the money is just a byproduct of it. It just comes. Not and that's what I think sometimes people get that confused as well, like thinking that money is prosperity, but your health, um, your yeah. well being, your mind, your family. You gotta start there. Your legacy. Um, you know, your heirs that are gonna come behind you, yeah. you know, all of them are gonna be affected by your purpose. And and one of the things is too, so uh, I've been able to, I've been blessed to be able to serve a lot of my friends that I grew up with in South Nashville and in North Nashville. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's big for us because some of us have went to college, gotten degrees, um, but we grew up in public housing, so we didn't know how to become a homeowner. Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to serve them, 
I mean, I just know like with some of them, they have no idea. Like after we closed, I cried in the car because I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not an emotional person. My friends know you were that. Holding it in. I was holding it in the whole time, but just to know that God used me. I mean, it could have been anyone else mm-hmm. um, that he used, but he used me. And one of my friends, I like to share this story. Her name is Asia. She, she's probably going to see this, but um, we were going through the process with her and she is crazy because she really kind of act just how I acted. Like she was very nervous and right before closing, she was like, I don't know if, I don't know if I can do this or not. And so like, she literally didn't talk to me for like three, four days. Okay. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. Or, did I do something wrong? <laughs> you know, are you okay? And so she finally like came back around and she was like, Chanel, I got it. I'm going to be able to do it. I said, you are, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. And we she closed. Just scared. Just scared. Yeah. Just scared. And so I bet, I, that happens a lot, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Especially with first time home buyers, like some of my, my real estate colleagues, we talk and I was just like, Chanel, how do you deal with first time home buyers? But I feel like God gave me the patience. If I have patience for three and four year olds, I definitely have patience oh, for a grown that. up. That's a first time home buyer. Right. So I, I love it. I love when people come to me and they they don't think that it's possible. And then we get them approved and then they're like, what? And then we we go through all the processes and then we get to closing. And like one of my friends I grew up with, I sold her house. I think it was year before last. And I was like, girl, this is your house. She's like, no, it's not. I'm like, this is your house now. I have a house, you know, so. Oh, wow. It's crazy um, to think like about some of the reactions, but I love knowing that God, purposely put me there to serve them through that process. Yeah. And how does it make you feel? Like, I mean, you, because you felt that you've talked about how you felt, but like what now when you help someone else and they, and they're coming out of the closing. So, I mean, like, like you're saying, some people, it's not even settled in yet with them. It's reality. You know, it's crazy. Cause I feel like every time I'm closing all over again, like it's my house too. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, that's how I feel generally. Um, but it's good to know. I always tell my clients too. I want you, once we finish this process, to be an advocate for yourself in case you purchase again and I'm not here or I'm not able to be a realtor or you move, let's say, to New York somewhere where I'm not. I'll still help you. Of course, you call me and I kind of, you know, give you the rundown. But I want you to understand what this process is and how comprehensive it is. That was the biggest thing for me. I felt like even when... When I went to some um, home buyers classes, I feel like they really weren't comprehensive because I was like, well, you can break that down even more. But I'm used to breaking stuff down because I work with three and four year olds. So I pr- I'm pretty sure I could probably teach like a three and four year old like the process of buying a home. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but that's literally like what this, you know, a chat GP, like that is the thing. Like it's, you know, if you ask the AI app thing, it's it's really breaks it, breaks it down to just where like a child can understand it because mm-hmm. that's really the message. Mm-hmm. It's not that you're talking down to someone. It's just like, but that's where it starts to resonate. Like it's, you got to simplify it, but also be thorough. Right. You know? So, um, the little North Nashville connection, I actually was born in Parkwood and really? my, my parents went to Maplewood. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. My sisters went to Maplewood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my mom was a teenage parent and was dropped out when I, she was a, uh, had me when she was a junior. Oh, wow. So yeah, okay. I'm thankful for that, obviously, but, but we're not here to talk about me. So, um, so when you're talking about, um, education now, you actually, you teach realtors. So you, you're an instructor, a course instructor. So you've kind of taken that. And what I love about you is that, you know, and I think for listeners out there that have kind of gotten dug into one area and they're so far deep into an industry, then they think, well, I guess I, I'm, I went to school for all this. I guess I should still stay, but maybe there is something else, but you can use some of what you learn from that and take it. And so you did that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I think that um, one of the biggest things I think that correlates between from being a teacher and being a realtor is that the relationship piece. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to establish relationships with these clients. And what I mean by that is most of my clients, I feel like by the time we're done with the process, they they feel like I'm an extended cousin or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just kind of the kind of relationship that we have. And even as a teacher, I would tell my parents like, yeah, you're their parents, but while they're here, they're my babies. Right. You know, so when you have those kind of relationships with, with the people that you serve, um, because that's one thing I think, too, people get kind of misconstrued is between being a leader, a leader and actual leadership. 
it's servitude. Right. It's, it's not that you're some like high horse on the pedestal or anything like that. You're a servant. You're the yeah. highest servant. You're basically. washing feet. So um, I think that those things have helped me um, kind of work work both businesses, I guess, together, both both careers together, I would say. Um, because as far as real estate with the relationships, that kind of works together in a, in addition to um, me teaching now realtors. So yeah. I was teaching three and four years, now I'm teaching realtors. And so like, what kind of classes are you teaching? So I am going to be teaching, I haven't taught um, in a few months. The last time I taught was the, the course for new affiliates. Okay. Um, but I'm going to be teaching pre-licensing. Okay. So I'm excited for my students that are going to be coming in March. I'm going to start okay. back in March. Um, and then I'll teach pre-licensing again in the summertime and probably one more time in the fall. And then I'm going to go back to the course for new affiliates. Okay. okay. So what is your outlook here for Nashville real estate coming up? I mean, um, you know, these next year, uh, what are your thoughts as we move forward as you're, as you're advising your clients um, right now? Well, what I've been advising my clients to do is crazy because I told your wife, everything that you post, I kind of feel like I'm preaching the same thing. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know if we're like on the same wave or whatever, but I'm, I'm telling people the exact same thing. Um, for right now, what I'm telling people is that if you can afford to buy, if you can get pre-approved, you need to buy right now. Right. Um, I mean, like right now, yeah. because I don't know what the rates are going to do. Everybody predicts something, but what they predicted last year did not happen. Right. <laughs> OK, so we know right. that. But um, and I think, too, that's kind of affected a lot of clientele as far as buyers last right. year because of that. But now, I mean, I feel like the rates are going to be kind of like where they are a mm. little bit lower. Um, so. My hopes is that more people will consider buying, right. um, especially with me hearing how high the rent is. Oh, my gosh. Like one of right. my clients, she chose to to wait it out. She, she relocated here, but she was like, I wanted to buy, but then I just want to rent. So we got her a, a property to lease. Um, and she was like, oh, my gosh, I should have just bought. I was like, yeah, I was trying to tell you that. Right. So um, we're going to get back to working on that. But I think what I what I really want to see is. um more people, I guess, learning about the process, not that you have to start the process, but learning about the process. So when you start the process, you understand, okay, so when they are ready, you know, you know, which way to go. Right. So I think that's the, the biggest thing that I would, I would like to see instead of some people, because how some people have had to be stuck with these landlords yeah. um, increasing the rent prices. And I mean, r rent right now is ridiculously high. Right. I mean, ridiculously high. So I hope that we'll see some, some, some more shifts. I guess yeah. I would say it's, it's, Price price dec decreases. I hope we see some more um, decreases, but I I doubt that because the rates are dropping. Right. Um, but what I will say is about buying right now. I mean, if you buy right now, just because a house is listed at three fifty doesn't mean that it's going to sell at three fifty. Not right now, right? No, not right now at all. I mean, that wasn't one, the case though. Explain that because that what was the case six or eight months ago? Okay, so literally twenty twenty. I think was it twenty twenty one. I mean, I was selling house like every week. I didn't even know like which way I was going, coming or going. And there was major like bids on homes, um, people bidding. Multiple 50, bids. Yeah, multiple bids. Fifty, hundred thousand dollars over asking price. Um, if you wanted to go see it right now, I would literally drop what I'm doing so we can go see the house right now. Right. That's that's how important it was to go see it. Last year kind of slowed down um because the rate increased, but then you were having multiple offers, um, no seller concessions. They were as he is. Um, people were waiving inspection, everything, waiving appraisal. Yep. Um, but now what you're seeing is, you know, a lot of the inventory is sent on the market for at least about 46, 47 days. So sellers are ready to sell. And, and one thing that I've noticed, too, and this has just been in conversation, a lot of people that are trying to sell right now, went under contract on new constructions at the beginning of the year last year. So the rates right. were still good at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. but they need to sell their homes because their houses are done now. Right. And so you can negotiate. There's room for negotiation there now. They got to sell. They have to sell. One of my recent deals, I mean, literally $50,000 
lesson asking it. And my broker, she was like, that was a good, you know, a good, I was like, yeah, that was. I'm shocked that I even negotiated $50,000, right. you yeah. know, less than what they wanted, but they needed to move. They were relocating. Um, so that's what you're getting right now. The sellers are, are trying to sell their homes. They have reasons. People that are selling right now really have reasons to sell. Yeah. They're either trying to relocate. They already have a new home that's under construction or um, they already had a, a, a contract. So they're trying to, you know, get their home sold. So you're getting a lot of seller concessions, people paying the seller full. Seller concessions, right. They're paying the, the closing costs. Closing costs, um, buy downs. You're getting all right, of that rate now. Buy down, mm -hmm. Which means what? Tell, tell people what that means. So when you're getting a rate buy down, they're, they're actually paying for your rate to be lower. Mm. Um, and for the buyer, that's good for you because your you, payment is going to be benefit. lower. Right. You benefit. Your your payment is going to be lower. Um, so that's what we have been seeing across the board. Even some builders are offering their own special mm -hmm. um, special interest rates right now. They're doing a buy right. down for you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned earlier, I mean, it maybe wasn't an issue for you, but for those who maybe think, well, gosh, I don't know if I can buy because my credit. Talk about that. Like, it, what can people do? I mean, are they stuck forever? I mean, I know we help people, um, you know, sometimes it's a year process, right? Sometimes it is. And one thing, too, um, with my team, I do this work, but it's not just me by myself. Um, I have a, a credit repair person that I refer mm -hmm. people to, um, and she's great. She's great. She has her own business and she, you know, does credit repair with some of my clients. But it's not an all in all. If your credit is in a space um, to where it's, it's not the most positive space, it can always be worked on. Yeah. Sometimes it's just as easy as setting down, navigating what needs to be paid, how it needs to be paid and what documentation you need right. for it to be done. So I would say to everyone that does need credit repair, there is um, people out there that can help you. Like I said, I know for my team, one stop shop. If you come to me, you say you want to buy a house. Just I just take your hand. Right. You need credit repair. You're not ready right now. I got somebody for that. I got multiple lenders. So I have all of right. that to help to support you, to get you to that space. And it may be, you know, six months to a year to until you're ready to buy, but you're still working. You're in the process. Yeah. And I find that, and of course, I mean, you guys know this, but, you know, some people know what not to do. They'll rush out and think they're going to do it all on their own and they're going to pay off these collections. Mm -hmm. Well, when you pay off the collection is actually, believe it or not, it's not the right thing to do. It, right. it does what's called brings it current. So the collection, medical collection, or some card that you bought your girlfriend a ring and you just let the thing from Zales or K Jewelers go back or whatever it is. And now you got to decide to, you're going to just, you're going to pay the collection because that's the right thing to do. And it's counterintuitive, but it actually makes it worse. So you're better off to negotiate a deletion in writing. Mm -hmm, so that's where mm -hmm. the credit repair person comes in. And by the way, like credit repair, it's really for your benefit. And oftentimes there's really no cost involved. Right. I mean, it's just a matter of doing a couple of things. So I think some people may get caught up on, Hey, um, is this going to cost me a bunch of money to get out? I mean, sometimes if it's a, you've got a really mess you've dug in several accounts, but oftentimes it's just one or two things, right? Right. Right. I mean, sometimes, you know, is, is, it's as simple as one or two things mm -hmm. that you can resolve. But sometimes I think people are not even educated on what's good credit and what's bad credit. What yeah, they don't know. Credit score? They don't know. Like I had someone come and tell me, I have a, I have a 640. I don't, I don't think that's enough. I said, girl, you know what you can qualify <laughs> right. Right, for right now? Like right. you can qualify for all of our first time home buyer yeah. programs with this credit score. So yeah. she had no idea. I mean, we closed her. We got her at home, but I mean, she had no idea. She was just like, if, I thought my credit was bad the whole time. I was like, 640 is good. Right, right. You, you were doing it and had no debt. And then if you've got down payment, um, you can pay your own down payment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go oftentimes down to 580 mm -hmm. on new FHA. you got to have your own 3.5%. Right. Uh, but 600 um, you can get a gift. And a lot of times I don't think people realize, you know, you know, that a gift can be a combination. If you haven't saved it all up, but your aunt or your grandma or someone has a family member is willing to contribute a little bit 
to your down payment, mm-hmm. um, you know, they can do it. And then now you've got this thing called home fund it, where it's crowdfunding mm-hmm. and heck people are getting married and they're contributing, you know, instead of buying them a toaster, mm-hmm. they're giving them money and it's for the purchase of the home. For the purchase of the home. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I know that there is a show. I forget the name of the show. Um, it's like you can kind of choose if you want to get a house or have a dream wedding. And I love that because most of the people you know, they, they're trying to figure out, like, what they want to do. And I, they filmed it here in Nashville, too. I, I watched it on TV before, and they filmed it here in Nashville. And the couple that was actually moving here, they decided to go with the wedding, but they wanted to rent for a year. And then I guess they did, like, some kind of update, right. and they purchased a home. Right. So I think that's good. You know, if you have, you know, occasions where whether it's your birthday or a new baby's coming, you know, you need to expand. Maybe instead of all those diapers, can you have a, you know, down payment fund? (laughs) Right. And I think it's just so important, Chanel, for, uh, for us in the industry to explain that, you know, it, buying your first home when you when now you're a homeowner mm-hmm. because it's it's only going to get harder and we're becoming more and more like um, you know England and the UK where it's more and more of a renter's nation is what I mean by that meaning mm-hmm. um, and now you've got these institutional buyers JP Morgan they're coming in Blackstone and and they're competing it makes it even harder and those houses that those homes that they buy are never going to go back on the market right so it they're they're hurting the little guy mm-hmm. uh, the common person who's coming in and wanting to buy a home for their family and so i do think that it is important for people to know that right now i think we're we're in a little bit of a, 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 a where the, the pendulum is swung back enough to where like you say more sellers are being negoti- negotiating. They're mm-hmm. selling, uh, or they're they're asking. Um, they're giving closing costs to the buyer as they sell their home, and so it just it's it's easier now. Is it hard? Well, sure, but it's it's what we're trying to say is put it in perspective. It's easier than it was eight months ago, mm-hmm. and um, you can get the seller to pay more than whereas before it was just over list. You know, seller's not going to pay anything. You're coming out of pocket with everything, and so now. It's good to see, I think, don't you, that the pendulum is swung. But I don't think I think that window is going to close because inflation is going to get under control, and once that happens and rates come back down to the fives, you know, in the mid fives, then I think what's going to happen, you're going to have everybody's going to be fighting over the same home again, and we're going to be right back to where we were because these millennials they have to have somewhere to live. I mean, age up uh, to age 34, several million of them do this year, and that's the prime buying age for millennials. Mm-hmm. And so there's a housing shortage. There's mm-hmm. eight million homes that were short, and so. So it's just a supply and demand thing. And I think people freaked out about a crash. And, and, and that's no, not happening. Ain't, ain't no crash coming. Not in, <laughs> that so. is not happening, especially not in Nashville. Right. Um, and I think that looks different when we hear people talk about it for each market. Each market is different. But I know what I have seen, I don't see that for happening in Nashville anytime soon. I think um, a lot of people, too, even when the rates were a little bit higher, like in the sevens, um, I was selling, you know, still get it and refinance Mm -hmm. you can always refinance um i think that's what most people don't don't take consider or take you know take under consideration when they're first um going through the process right Right. i mean you Uh, need to be able to afford it at mm -hmm. the seven percent and there is no guarantee the rates will come down but we just know historically yep they they have have. Mm -hmm. and so all you can do is look back you know because you know sometimes i get that on social media well you, you know it, you know saying you can always refinance or whatever what we mean is like historically they, they have, have come, come down, down. Mm-hmm. so but we don't know that for sure so historically they have um but i would say if you're in the space to buy and you can afford to buy it right now Do you it. need to right now it's just gonna get harder it's just yeah. gonna get harder um another thing too i think that some people and this is like kind of going off course from that that spill with first time home buyers, um, a lot of people don't know about the um what am I trying to think about? What am I saying right now? We can edit it, somebody do. Okay. Um home warranties. That's what I was talking about. Ooh, so home warranties, yeah. So a lot of people don't know about home warranties. I the, think the, why, and that's important because they're concerned that they're gonna move in the house and, and the HVAC is gonna go out, mm-hmm. or the, and they can't afford it because they, they moved can't in afford with it. A little bit of down payment didn't have a lot saved. So a lot of people, once they get to like, okay, I understand this process, and they get to the end, okay, but what if something happens as soon mm-hmm. as I go in there? And so I'm like, well, you know, you can always purchase the home warranty. They're like blown away, like what? 
You There's can have the warranty. seller pay the home warranty too now. You can ask the seller to pay the home warranty. Most new constructions, of course, they come with that first year home, mm-hmm. first year builder's warranty, um, but have extended warranties as well. So also educating yourself on knowing that just because you purchase a home doesn't mean that your all your cash in your pocket is going to go away. Right. You know, there's avenues to, to make sure that, you know, you have an, a nest egg to, yeah. to help you. And then you have that coverage with that, right. that, um, well, with that home warranty, home warranty yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Chanel, people out there, they're listening and thinking, man, I may want to explore this whole home buying process. Um, how do they reach you? Um, tell them what they need to do to reach you and to get started. Okay, so to reach me, um, if you're on Instagram, my my tag is dot realtor underscore and someone asked me before too why is that my my name and literally when i decided that i was gonna go like full throttle um real estate i prayed about what that needed to be mm-hmm. and that's what god revealed to me so nashville dot realtor you went all in on nashville nashville dot realtor underscore like it was not about me right. it's about me being a realtor serving my purpose to you so once you meet me you know my name is chanel but you really wouldn't know if you went to my <laughs> If you went to my page. But yeah, so you can follow me Nashville on Instagram. Nashville dot realtor underscore. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they can find you there. Yep. And, and then what do they need to do? They need it pre approved. So they call a lender. Right. So what you can do is you can schedule an initial consultation with me. I have a um a list of the consultations on my Instagram page on my bio. There's a link there. Um also you can email me um at Chanel uh Chanel Realtor dot Chanel B at gmail dot com. Realtor dot Chanel B. Mm-hmm. Okay. S H A N E L O E. Mm-hmm. B B at Gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. Or you can always call me. At 615-592-1042. Um, and either either one of those avenues, I'll be able to connect with you. Um, and if, like I said, if it's not a good time for you, when you call me, you can always mm-hmm. schedule a consultation. They're free. All of my consultations are free. Yeah, yeah. And then, and the guys, you know, it, the importance of being pre-approved, I mean, uh, huge. I mean, we have clients that will approach us. They don't know. I get, I get, you know, lots of leads on social media. Hey, what do I need to do first? And they think that they just need to go. Like, I literally had this question the other day. Um, hey, I was going to go out and purchase, uh, look at a bunch of homes. My realtor said I can't do that because you have been pre-approved. So that's when, like, when we get these clients, we'll say, look, yes, the first step is number one, get pre-approved. Mm-hmm. We can help with that if that's something you want. If you have somebody that you love, that's great too. Mm-hmm. Um, we get you pre-approved, then we can find your realtor and plug you in with the realtor. But you've got to have the pre-approval letter or the realtors are just not going to get you in the car because they don't know right. if if they're wasting time. Um, or what you can even afford. What you can afford. You mm-hmm. need to know your budget. And just because, you know, you can't afford it, you may not want to spend that much. Right, right, right. So right. You, may, you may have been approved for this, but you may say, well, that, I can't, that's not gonna be, I'm not about to pay that kind of payment. Right, right, and, right. And, um, and, and at least you can know, at least you can know kind of what, you know, the what payment correlates with the, with the price point that you're at. Also, too, I want to encourage some people that are inspired to to buy homes or purchase homes at this time. I know I've had the question of some some of my buyers that ask, well, do I have to pay you to? No, the seller pays the commission for the the buying agent. So you don't have to worry about that. It's your first big purchase, your first investment, um, your first large, probably your large and hmm. probably first large investment. So you don't have to worry about seller that. Seller pays all the commissions seller for pays, both sides. Seller pays all the commissions, so you do not. Um, I don't have any hidden fees i know some people have fees you know when they they work with certain clients or whatever i don't have any hidden fees um so seller pays we're good all right guys you heard it thanks for coming in today nashville.realtor underscore right Mm -hmm. all right and reach out to chanel and she will find you a home see you next time bye-bye thank you for having me